Welcome to our lecture online. Again, to get a better, under, a better understanding of what the reduced mass is, let's compare it to an example at the quantum mechanic level. Let's go all the way back down to the hydrogen atom where we have a single proton at the center and an electron zipping around the proton. So again, it's a binary system, but at a very miniature level. So let's say we have the proton in the middle and now we have an electron. And let's say the electron resides at the n equals 5 level. And then it jumps down to the n equals 2 level, which is part of the Balmer series, and then it ejects a photon of a wavelength of 434 nanometers. So this was then figured out, and the equation to calculate the wavelength is 1 over lambda equals the Rydberg constant times 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared, n of course being the orbital number of the electron. R typically is known to be 1.097 times 10 to the 7 meter, uh, per meters. Now again, I said you get a wavelength of 434 nanometers, but if we do a very careful calculation of this value, and then we do a very careful measurement of the actual wavelength being emitted, we found that there was a slight difference between what we calculated and what we actually measured. Now, the Rydberg constant can be calculated like this. This is the equation of the Rydberg constant. Note that it includes the mass of the electron. But, since the barycenter between the electron and the proton is not exactly at the center of the proton, but slightly away from the center of the proton, such that the proton actually moves as well as the electron spins around it, there must be some sort of difference between what we get and what we expect if we purely think that the center of the proton is exactly the center of the orbit of the electron, which of course it's not. And because of that, we then need to recalculate the Rydberg constant by using the reduced mass of the electron rather than the mass of the electron. Now, how much of a difference does it make? Well, it turns out that the mass of a proton is approximately 1835 times the mass of an electron. So if we put that into the equation, notice we can then replace the mass of the proton by 1835 times the mass of the electron, and essentially the reduced mass then becomes 1835 divided by 1836, because here we're adding the two together, times m. And so that's about 0.9995 times the mass of the electron, which means the difference, the difference is approximately equal to 0.05%. Now, that's not a lot, but uh, it is 0, 0.0, yep, 0.05%, but it's enough for us to be able to measure the slight difference between the wavelength measured versus the wavelength calculated when we don't use the reduced mass. And when we do use the reduced mass, we get the exact wavelength of the emitted photon. So you can see that the reduced mass is simply not a mathematical conscript, it's an actual physical conscript. And in order for us to be able to get the correct values out of experiment, experimental results like that, we do have to use the reduced mass because it gives us the correct physical phenomenon that we're dealing with. So the reduced mass is really the reality of what's going on, also from a mathematical perspective as well as of a physical perspective. So that's why the reduced mass is a very important concept whenever objects are revolving around a common point like in a binary star system. And that is how it's done.